we will see the anatomy of the humerus. Whenever we are describing the bone, first we should answer the bone belongs to which area, that means the location. So the humerus is the bone of the arm. So your first answer should be the humerus is the bone of the arm. Looking to the humerus, you can verify it belongs to the long bone. So as per the classification, humerus belongs to long bone and each long bone has the two ends and the shaft. So here also you find the shaft and the two ends. Now the question is how you can determine the two ends, upper end and the lower end. In case of humerus, the upper end is having the ball shaped, globe shaped head. So this is the head, while the lower end is expanded on side to side to side in the form of the condyles and depressed anteroposteriorly. So this is the lower end. So here we are determining the upper end, lower end and the sub. Suppose this is the specimen, here you uh, verify this, the upper end, lower end and the sub. Now first we will see about the determination of the side. First let us determine the side of this humerus. For determining the side, one has to verify three points. Any one point belong to anterior posterior, any one point belong to superior and inferior, and any one point belong to medial and lateral. Now coming to this, we know this head. Head is on the upper end. So it's now very easy to distinguish this is the upper end. Same way, the head is articulating with the scapula, forming the shoulder joint. So naturally, this is on the medial side. So we have verified two things, number one, this is the upper end, this is the medial side. So we have verified the upper end and the medial side. Now the question is of the anterior and the posterior. For this, you remember this small elevation that we call the lesser tubercle. Lesser tubercle should be facing anteriorly, right? So this you keep anteriorly. There are other parameters too. On the lower end, if you see, there are two small fossae and there is a one large fossae on the posterior side. So by looking to this small two fossae on anterior side and one large fossa on the posterior side, you can also note this is the anterior side and this is the posterior side. So now in this specimen we have verified this is the upper end, this is the anterior side and this is the medial side. So if we place this, this become or this belong to the right side. Same way, suppose this is the specimen, here we just verify the head, head is upward, head is facing medially. Same way, there are two small fossae anteriorly, the large fossae posteriorly, or we can say the uh, lesser tubercle anteriorly. So now, if we want to place it like this, so this belongs to the left side. So this is how the side determination of the humerus. Now we will see the different uh, structures, features on the uh, humerus. Uh, as we have described, it is belong to long bone having the upper end, lower end, shaft. So first we will see the uh, features on the upper end, then we will see the features on the shaft and then we will see the features on the lower end. First we will see the upper end. Now see, if we hold like this, this, this we consider to be a surgical leg and this is called the surgical leg because it separates the upper end and the shaft. So now we are just focusing on the upper end, that means above the area to the surgical leg. Above this, the upper end is present in the articular and the non-articular part. So the line that separates the articular and non-articular part that we call the anatomical leg. Just below to the surgical leg or just above, it, I mean to say 0.5 meter above the surgical leg, there is one another line that we call the morphological leg. So the humerus has the three names, the anatomical leg, the surgical leg and the morphological leg. Now uh, the anatomical leg separates the head. This head articulates with the glenoid cavity of the uh, scapula and form the shoulder joint or we call the glenohumeral joint. And if you see the direction of it, it is uh, up, uh, upward, a uh, little backward and medial. The non-articular part presents the two elevations. This is the large elevation and this is the small elevation. This small elevation that we call the lesser tubercle, while this large elevation that we call the greater tubercle. On the greater tubercle, on the posterior side, there are three impressions, the upper impression, the middle impression and the lower impression. In between these two tubercles, there forms a depression. The depression we call the groove. As it located between the two tubercles, it's called the intertubercular sulcus. 
it also contains the tendon of the long head of the bicep and that is why it also call the uh, bicipital groove so this we call the bicipital groove or we call the uh, intertubercular sulcus now we go to the shaft the shaft of long bone generally belong to a prismoid in shape so here also it's prismoid but that is only restricted in the lower half in the upper half it is circular while in the lower half it is triangular prismoid so three separate borders this is the anterior border this is the uh, lateral border and this is the medial border but in the upper part these borders are not prominent so the shaft having the three borders and three surfaces in the upper half it is uh, almost circular in the lower half it is triangular and the, all the three borders are prominent if you see the anterior border anterior border begins from the anterior aspect of this uh, greater tubercle runs downward and fade up and finally ends at the lower end same way on the this that is the medial border which is going from the medial side of the uh, lesser tubercle running downwards and finally ends into the medial epicondyle same way on the lateral side that is the uh, lateral border which is begins from the posterior aspect of the greater tubercle runs downwards and ends into the uh, uh, lateral uh, lateral condyle now see during its course it is deficient in the middle which is actually due to a depression and the depression is nothing but a groove and that groove we call the radial groove because it contains the radial nerve this radial nerve in its course having the spiral course and that is why the radial nerve also called the spiral nerve in the middle it also presents a v shaped tuberosity that we call the deltoid tuberosity so this is about the shaft if you see on the anteromedial side there is a, a neutrine foramen so that also present on the anteromedial surface of the humerus now if we go to the lower end lower end having the two condyles there is a medial condyle and the lateral condyle medial condyle is much more prominent as compared to the lateral condyle here also you find the articular and the non articular area the articular area are in the form of a large head shaped area that we call the capitula because it is just accommodating the or it's just resting on the head or articulates with the head of the radius and that we call the capitula cap related to the head same way on the medial side there is a pulley shaped uh, area that we call the trochlea this trochlea articulates with the trochlear notch of the ulna if you see the two flanks of this uh, uh, trochlea the median flank is comparatively very large and because of that it forms an carrying angle same way uh, the non articular part shows the medial condyle lateral condyle the two fossa on anterior side and one large fossa on the posterior side so the anterior uh, two fossa are on the lateral side there is the radial fossa which accommodates the head of the radius in the uh, during the full flex same way here you find the coronoid fossa which accommodates the coronoid process of the ulna during the full flex uh, fora same way on the oleg posterior side there is a large fossa that we call olecranon fossa this accommodates the olecranon process of the ulna in the full extended fora now the most prominent part on the condyle that we call the epicondyle so here you find the medial epicondyle here you find the lateral epicondyle this will continues along with the borders so this a linear elevation linear elevation we call the ridge as it is on the condyle we call the supracondylar ridge or as it is on the medial side we call the medial supracondylar ridge same way it is also on the lateral side so we call it lateral supracondylar ridge so this is the lateral supracondylar ridge this is the medial supracondylar ridge now we will see the various attachment on the humerus the humerus gives various attachments if you see on the upper end upper end you find there are various insertions because muscles generally gives insertions at the upper end and the origin at the lower end so here you find uh, the uh, humerus on the upper end articulates with the uh, scapula and form the shoulder joint so there are the group of muscles the muscles of the shoulder region they are inserted on the upper end so let's summarize this muscle uh, the muscles of the uh, shoulder uh, shoulder regions includes the uh, subscapularis the supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor teres major and the deltoid so this subscapularis is inserting on the lesser tubercle of the humerus 
uh, and the upper impression on the greater tubercle gives insertion to the supraspinatus. Uh, the middle will give insertion to the infraspinatus and the lower one that gives insertion to the teres minor. Now this is the intertubercular sulcus. The medial leap of the intertubercular sulcus gives insertion to the teres major while the lateral leap gives insertion to the pectoralis major. In between you find there is the insertion of the uh, latissimus dorsi. So this is how you find attachment on the upper end. Now on the deltoid tuberosity you find there is the insertion of the deltoid. On the medial side, on the medial border, in the middle, the junction between the tooth, upper, the lower two third and the middle one third here, this part gives uh, insertion to the corecobrachialis. In the uh, lower halves of the anteromedial surface and the anterolateral surface gives origin to the brachialis. Now if we go on the posterior side, now see this is the radial groove. This radial groove having the two lips. This is the lateral leap of the radial groove and this is the medial leap of the lateral groove. So here it gives the attachment of the lateral head of the tricep while in the lower part it gives insert, uh, origin to the uh, medial head of the tricep. So tricep arising, lateral head arising from this and the medial head arising from this area. Now in the lower part, basically lower part you find there are the muscles of the forearm. So these all are having mostly the origin. So on the medial side there is the common flexor origin while on the lateral side there is the common extensor origin. Common flexor muscle includes the pronator teres, the uh, flexor carpi radialis, the palmaris longus, the flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum superficialis. Here you find the upper part of the medial condyle gives origin to the pronators, pronator teres, while the major portion of this medial condyle gives the rest of the uh, common flexor muscles. While on the lateral side there is the origin of the common extensor group. Common extensor group includes the anconius, the brachioradialis, the extensor carpi radialis longus, the extensor carpi radialis brevis, the extensor digitorum, the extensor digiti minimum. But if you see the actual origin on the posterior side here you find there is the origin of the anconius. The upper two third of the medial supra, uh, lateral supracondylar reach gives origin to the brachioradialis. The lower one third gives origin to the uh, extensor carpi radialis brevis, and rest of the muscles are arising from the common, uh, that is the medial epicondyle in the form of uh, sorry lateral epicondyle in the form of common extensor origin. So this is about the origin and insertions on the humerus. Humerus having the articulation at the upper end, it articulates with the glenoid cavity in form the shoulder joint. Below it articulates with the ulna and the radius and involved in the formation of the uh, elbow joint. So the ligaments of it, they are also attached to the uh, respective ends. Uh, at the upper end you find there is the capsular ligament of the uh, uh, shoulder joint, while in the lower side you find there is a capsular ligament of the uh, elbow joint. Uh, applied point of view, uh, there are three nerves are in very much relation with the different points of the shoulder. At the surgical leg, there is the circumflex nerve. So, on the fracture of this, uh, the surgic, uh, axillary nerve or the circumflex nerve is likely to get damaged. Same way, in the middle, there is a passage of the radial nerve. So, in the fracture of the mid shaft, there is chances of damage to the uh, radial nerve. Same way, just in front of the medial condyle, there is a passage of ulna nerve. So, during the fracture of this medial epicondyle, there may be a chances of damage to the uh, ulna. So, this you can include in the applied aspect. Right? Fine.